Hello again, this is Frequency Bone, Summer Music Connection 10. <laughs> the Art of the Student, Video 9. I'm going to might. Let me say that again. <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of videos this summer. Who knows? I really don't know where this is going to go, but it has a way of attracting to itself the process that I'm in with this art of the student so much that uh, I'm amazed by it. And you know what? If there's a wave, write it. And uh, that's what I feel like I need to do with this video series. So for those of you who can get something from it, it's for you. You know, I have to share something with you. My wife and I, oh, yeah, it must have been just last week. It was last week. Right, last week. We saw the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood documentary, the film of Fred Rogers and the whole history behind what came to be known as Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Insights into his early life, insights into his beliefs, I didn't even know he has a degree. His first bachelor's, his first degree in college was in music composition. And when I used to watch that film, not the film, the, the TV series with my son, Ben, when he was very young, I thought, wow, this music is really pretty curious and interesting for a kid's show. Meanwhile, it was him playing. Maybe his wife was playing some of the time, too. Her name's Joanne, and she's a concert Hi. pianist. Right, girl? Right? And I'll tell you, I was very affected by this documentary. This guy was the real deal. And you've heard people say this term, real deal. What does that mean? For me, it means that the person is what they say they are. <laughs> they walk the talk. They are what you see. They're not masquerading as something else just to get attention for their own greed or their own ends. They're not doing it to highlight themselves. They're doing it as a service and a function into humanity. At least at, at, at one level of looking at it, someone like Fred Rogers, an ordained Presbyterian minister. But he had such a broad sense of what religion was. He never put his religion on anyone. He awakened a deeper love in the people that he met. And he specialized with children. And for a lot of reasons. If you haven't seen the film, please go see it. You know, he had to be creative as a child. Um, for a lot of different reasons. And creative mean what? Mean, what does that mean? We talk about creativity. He created his own circumstances that he could have communication with his make-believe world to try to get certain parts of him expressed. And he would go on these incredible journeys, and you can see that in his program. And then music became a part of it. In his life, music meant a great deal. He could express things in music that he couldn't express with words, or wasn't allowed to express with words. 
So how does this relate to the art of the student? An amazing connection to it. Because he was very young when he was involved in music and involved in his own world of thought and meaning and search for truth and finding out what's inside of himself at a very young age. And students, you know, young children have this little world. People might have different ones, okay? I remember my mom used to give us a cardboard box and we'd go to another planet in it. We'd make some kind of fort out of it. We'd have journeys with it. It was incredible. So creating from not much ties in with something a great mentor of mine said that I talked a bit about on the last video. If you can't find it, make it. And Fred Rogers used to find his own peace in his little neighborhood he'd create as a kid. He'd find expression. He'd find acceptance in that created neighborhood. And I think that was a link for him, never losing sight of a much deeper part of himself. And that's why he could get close and look to these young, into these young children's eyes and say, I like you just the way you are. Now, some people interpret that the wrong way, what he meant. He didn't mean, you know, do whatever the heck you like and make others miserable and you're great. That's not what he said. He said, I accept you just the way you are. I like you just the way you are. Meaning, he accepts them. It was his way of saying, Start with what you can do. Start with what you are and expand from there. And that's exactly what he did with his life. And it's so curious because I did so much reflecting on this this week. And I thought about, you know, because I didn't have a lot growing up, in terms of material things or anything like that. And I had my own things that I had to struggle with, people making fun of me, thinking I was a serious musician playing a trombone at age 10 and people laughing at me. And then not so much later on. But at first, that wasn't, you know, a popular thing in my neighborhood to be doing. But for me, it was my little neighborhood. And I had one before that. And children can have this make-believe world. And it's very, very important, that world. And as a student, why not have your own world? Not necessarily make believe, but it's your beliefs coming out of you, or the discovery of what you believe in, and to be able to explore, and to have awe and wonder for the world around you, for the world around you, and nature, and wonderful little other friends you can have. Friends, this... This friend, we've been through a lot together. <laughs> and to open up the doors that take us beyond this crusty adult thing sometimes. It gets very crusty if you're not careful. And we're afraid to break out because of not maybe being accepted. So what did Mr. Rogers do? What did Fred Rogers do when he was young? With maybe he wasn't too accepted because of the way he was as a person or 
who knows what? He created his friends. He says they were make-believe. What is art? Is art all make-believe? Oh, I just played a tune. Is that make-believe? If I write a piece about mountains, lakes, and trees, which I've done, is that music not as real as the mountain? Does the harp sound that opens up the second movement called lakes? Not the sun glistening on the waves in the early morning. Or the movement of the trees and the violins and strings in the third movement called trees. Isn't that the wind against the trees? Is that just make I'm just make believing? What is art? To get into it at the deep end is very important. Everyone has the experience of certain feelings and thoughts. And then someone comes by sometimes and gives you a slap in the face and says, wake up, you know. It's okay for someone to say, look, there's another world that's a pretty rough, pretty competitive. No one's just going to like you. Not everyone's going to like you just the way you are. And sometimes we have valuable lessons to learn, you know, to be nicer to people, to be more respective, respectful of other people. That's all part of it. But to think you have to totally change and actually be something you're not, that's different. I'm not saying, you know, get control of that ego is not a good thing. It is a good thing. Because it probably, when you don't have control of it, it can create a lot of harm in you and a lot of harm for others. Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, was not in to creating a lot of hurt in the world. He was like that oath, you know, do no harm that doctors are supposed to have. And so this is, well, I, you know, I, I remember as a kid, if I wasn't having a lot of lessons and I felt like I had to play for, you know, some important people, I would take these little plastic busts of composers my mom, you know, got me. And there was one of Wagner and Beethoven and Haydn and Mozart. And I'd line them up. <laughs> and I'd, I'd really try to feel that I was playing for these great composers. Was that just make-believe? Or was there something in the intention of that thought that connected to some of that actual feeling, even, a, even by a little bit, by that pure intention of someone who's, that was 11? I even did it 12, I did it for a while. How about you students out there listening to this, you teachers? When you were students, didn't you sit and imagine, ask yourself, okay, what would my teacher think about this? Maybe still do. It's very common for people of the Christian faith to say, huh, what would Jesus do? I might ask that. I might ask, what would Krishna do? Bhagavan Krishna do? What would Buddha do? What would any incredible, decent person do? <laughs> so, 
part of the arts of the student is to start with what you can do, which means starting with you and your abilities and your attitudes and move from there. And always go back to that point where my wife, Dr. Carol Vieira, and I in the frequency band would say, start with what you got Start with what got you into music in the first place. If you didn't get yourself into music in the first place and you're still with it, then obviously you're starting to build your own connections. Ask yourself, what do you love about music? Not what everyone else tells you that's so important. What do you love about music? Strengthen the reason why you want to play. Why not? That's so important. And you'll always, well, you'll be much closer to being in touch with you. You know, there's so much gain and loss in the world. It's so easy to feel your lesser. That isn't useful to say, wow, I know I need improvement on this, <clears throat> but still activate your love and why you do what you do. Okay? Because even on days maybe that you're not feeling that you're playing so well, Play something that you know you can play. Play a simple little tune. Play a note that feels good. And accept that's it right now. Because you know full well, life keeps moving. I used to be amazed sometimes if my lip felt like utter junk when I'd first start playing. And then I learned how to do a bunch of certain things. And within an hour, it's like, wow, great. And then I also learned the opposite law. Man, it feels great right when I picked it up. And then whoosh, within sometimes a short period of time, it wasn't that great again. And there's many variations on that theme. So let me ask you this. What kind of neighborhood, musically, do you want to live in? When I can say to someone, won't you be my neighbor in music? And when I'm saying that, I feel that I want that special something to come out naturally and to go on a journey of having it come out. Fred Rogers did that with the children he worked with. He did it on his TV show. He went on these journeys. He talked about life and death and the times that we live in always trying to elevate it and understand it. So, if you're not having one of those great days in the neighborhood, <laughs> it's okay. You'll probably do better on the next day or the next week. That's why keep your love really close by in the neighborhood. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Even if it takes a while. <laughs>